In this video, let's go through the install and setup of FreeCAD. Uh, this is for absolute beginners. I think this is the first absolute beginner topic I've addressed in FreeCAD. The other closest one I have is Sketcher uh, for beginners, assuming that you have a little bit of experience. So uh, in FreeCAD, right, this is the FreeCAD website, and we can hit up uh, downloads for some install files. Windows is pretty simple. Um, you can go install for a 32 or 64 bit system and when you do you can simply open or save the file and it runs like a typical Windows installer. Uh, for Linux you have a few more options right and uh, we default to a 64 bit app image. If you're not familiar with uh, app images in Linux they're actually pretty handy. This is an app image right you just download this file this is FreeCAD version 019. I did not install this file, right? This is just the actual file that I've downloaded. And by double clicking it, oh, you also have to, uh, by the way, properties, permissions, and make sure that you allow executing files a program. So as long as that box is checked, you double click on it and it opens up and runs a full program uh, without any installation necessary, right? So you have uh, the full program, no install, right? That's the beauty of app images and they're Linux distribution agnostic. But you may want, um, you know, a more classic install and you can check out this wiki and here they give you uh, some great instructions on how to install this for Linux. Um, I prefer using the terminal and I simply copy this line of code, this line of code, and this line of code and it installs just fine. Um, now if you want to have some of the uh, development releases, you can come down here to development versions, go to the FreeCAD releases page, and they usually come out on either a uh, Windows installer or a FreeCAD app image. So 0.19 is the current uh, development version as of the filming of this video. It has some pretty cool features, one of which I'll show you later on. Uh, once FreeCAD is installed, you will open it up to a page that looks like this, right? And you have a section that uh, the files you've had open recently will show up here. So it's easy to open them up without uh, digging through your history tree. SolidWorks has a quite similar feature that I use very liberally. Uh, and then down here, they give you some examples of things that you can do. Uh, if I click on this engine block .fcs, so the first thing I uh, might, might want to know about is how to adjust my view in the graphics display area right here. So if I, um, and you notice my keyboard monitor here, that will show how I use my mouse. But if I roll my mouse wheel with my mouse in the center of the graphics display area, forwards and backwards, you can see that I zoom in and zoom out on my view. Uh, next. If I move my mouse, say, to the left of the model and zoom in, the model moves away from my, va from my mouse. Likewise, if I move it to the right and zoom in, the model moves away from my mouse. So I can control um, almost like I am panning my view by zooming in and zooming out. So play with your mouse position as you zoom in and zoom out and get familiar with how the model works. It's rather intuitive. Uh, if I push down, and sort of click the center button on my mouse. While I hold that down, I can pan in and out, or side to side rather, and up and down uh, to manipulate my view. I can also roll my view by pushing the center mouse wheel and right clicking to roll my view. And you can see on the keyboard monitor, I'm pushing down on my wheel and right clicking at the same time. These settings can be changed uh, quite easily down here. If I uh, let's so say I'm blender settings, uh, then I have my zooming. Nothing happens if I, I try to right click and rotate my wheel, but if I use my center mouse button only, I can roll my view, right? So you can change when you manipulate your viewport with a number of pre-configured uh, settings here. I prefer CAD to uh, manipulate my uh, graphics display window with. Um, now over here you have underneath what defaults to a combo view here, you have tasks, 
and model. And under model, you have this tree. This is very, very important. This is your, uh, what you'd call feature design tree. I often call it the history tree. This is a history of how the part was made. And you can run through and uh, roll it back to several features uh, that were made in the history of the part. And uh, to make things visible or invisible, right? you can use the space bar. So if I want to make my crankcase visible or invisible, I highlight it in the tree and hit my space bar to make it appear or disappear. And that's true with past features as well. OK. There may be some settings that you wish to adjust as you start in FreeCAD and these can be changed with edit and preferences. We can go over here to units. I have mine set to Imperial right now. FreeCAD tends to default to metric small parts. And uh, you can also um, choose, uh, well, just a number of units. So usually it'd be either Imperial or uh, metric. I'll go with standard metric up here and apply. Uh, another thing that we may wish to change is uh, under general, I have mine set to dark green. Right now if you come to style sheet and say no style sheet, this is usually how uh, FreeCAD looks uh, prior to uh, any changes being set. So when you install it, this is what the basic install looks like. You can change this to say a dark blue if you prefer a darker theme. I have mine on dark green. And it's just a nice change of appearance. You may also um, want to make some changes uh, after you get into the sketcher. So one of the big issues that people have with FreeCAD is they sometimes unknowingly start on the wrong workbench. Workbenches are up here and they allow you to do different things with FreeCAD. I recommend part design for beginners. Not only is it kind of the most intuitive workbench in my opinion, but it's so along the lines of something like SolidWorks or Creo or X-Design or things that are in the industry, right? The workflow is very similar, so if you have any previous CAD experience, the knowledge translates very well. So if you're an absolute beginner, make sure this says part design. When we go to the part design workbench, um, we can <coughs> start a new part, right? Create a new empty document. And now we're in the uh, modeling environment. We always want to start with a sketch unless there's something highly unusual. Um, but my workflow is almost always right here, which is create a new sketch. And we choose a plane to work on, right? Uh, the XY plane looks straight down on the part. So we would model this in a way that we'd be looking at the top of our part. So this uh, cube up here gives us a good idea of how we want to orient. Um, if I roll my view, as we've done before, now I can click on this face and we'd be facing the front of our part. And here we'd be facing the right of our part and so on. Uh, so keep that in mind that uh, it's not absolutely vital to orient the part correctly, but it will do you a lot of favors if you do. Uh, so keep your part oriented right. Uh, I have a whole tutorial on the sketcher and how to sketch. So I'll throw up a card somewhere and you'll be able to uh, go through that if you'd like. Uh, I'm gonna create a sketch right now. And uh, there's one thing that I've had now in my years of using FreeCAD, this has only happened one time, but since I've came across it, this might help someone else. You'll notice if I create a line, this line is free to float anywhere in space. We have some, a feature called auto constraints, right? So if I hover my line over this origin, you'll see a dot on the lower right of my mouse. That dot means that if I click my mouse, which I will now, I will snap this line so that it is connected to the origin. And now no matter how I manipulate my line, it stays connected to the origin. That's very convenient for sketching. Sometimes these auto constraints, well, sometimes, in my case, only one time has this ever happened, uh, don't seem to work. And so if that uh, 
occurs to you or that happens to you. Uh, go to Edit, Preferences. We're going to go to Sketcher. And there's a box here that says Auto Constraints. That should default to being toggled on. Toggle this on and off a few times and then leave it on and say Apply. Next, come down here and toggle this on and off a few times. And your auto constraints, as long as that is both are toggled on, will work now. So if you have an auto constraint issue, which uh, happened to me once, and I think I've seen someone else have that happen, that is how uh, it gets fixed. Also in the sketcher, there's a few ways to customize uh, things. So maybe these points can be um, you know, too small to try to grab all the time. If you're having trouble with that, you can always say Edit Preferences, Display, and we can change our marker size to be a lot larger. And if I close and get back in my sketch, my markers become a lot larger and more convenient to grab. Right, so that's one adjustment you can make to your uh, uh, markers. Um, zero point one nine version of FreeCAD, right? I'm defaulting to point one eight point four, as you can always see up here. And point one nine, which I'll open up now, has a cool new feature. Often when I'm sketching, um, you know, I may hit the Escape key and it get, it exits my sketch, right? And that's not good, because then I have to go model and double click on my sketch in my history tree to get back into it. But uh, this cool feature uh, gives you a little bit of flexibility in FreeCAD. So if I open up uh, 0 0.19, to get to the sketch preferences, I have to be in a sketch, of course. So we'll go to Part Design, and we'll create a new document, get into a sketch here. So under Edit Preferences Sketcher, and you can always drag this out a little bit more. Edit Preferences Sketcher, let's go with uh, here, right? There's our Sketcher. There's this new setting under General that is Escape can leave Sketch Edit Mode, right? So if I toggle that off and say OK and start a sketch, I'm hitting Escape and uh, I am not leaving my sketch. I am coming from SolidWorks where I just blitz the escape key when I'm ready to uh, be done with something in my sketch and have it not leave. So this is a, a bad habit for me that I can now indulge with FreeCAD. What a great setting to have added. Uh, seriously, kudos to the developers for making such a wonderful program. And uh, this last tip in FreeCAD 019 was actually uh, brought to me by Swillabro. <laughs> uh, they, they left a comment on my channel and uh, let me know that this setting was available because I let me exit my sketch all the time in my videos. And uh, so hats off to them. Swillabro also has a really cool, in fact, let's bring this up here. They have a really cool uh, series of videos where you can uh, learn Linux CNC, how one, the basics. Uh, way cool. I highly recommend um, taking a look at this channel because uh, you know my CNC I made a video on the path workbench and I'm not very CNC heavy and this looks like a, a great channel for getting to be a little bit more CNC heavy so check this channel out subscribe and uh, I hope this video was helpful in getting started with FreeCAD again check out my sketcher for beginners video um, but again, I, in, in that video, I simply go to the sketcher and start sketching. If you're actually going to make a part, I recommend going to the part design and clicking this button here to get into the sketcher. Uh, so part design, click this button for the sketcher, and then follow along with my sketch video if you're interested. Again, hope this was helpful. Please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.